Hey, real quick before the video starts, and we answer these questions right here you see behind me. Um, I just got to talk about the purpose and the intent of this video and why I decided to make it. So, I wrote a few things down over here. The real big reason for creating this video was to just get some information about Fort Irwin on the internet. When I was first coming here in 2018, a lot of the information that I found on this place was more so spousal related rather than soldier related. So hopefully answering a few of these questions, which I, I prep, but they're not scripted. So me and my friends are gonna answer all these in a way that's genuine and true for all of us in hopes that that can ease some of your anxiety about Fort Irwin. That said, like the video, share it, comment, tell me what you like and don't like. Thank you for being part of this. We roll. All right, my name is Darius Hayes. I'm an 88 Mike. I've been in the Army for two years and two months. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and this is my first duty station. All right. So, my name is Justin Martin. Um, I am an 88 Mike, super duper trooper. I've been in the Army for about two years and a month. Um, I'm from Waldorf, Maryland, and this is my first duty station. My name is Kaulana Aina. I'm an 88 Mike. I've been in here for one year and 11 months. I'm from Hawaii, and this is my first duty station. You're from the two times. From the year. All right. <clears throat> so the first, the first question, I'll just ask them. You guys throw it around, then it'll come back towards me. The first question is, how did you feel when you were told that you were going to be coming to Fort Irwin? I'll go first. Yep, go ahead. All right, bet. So when I was told that I was coming to Fort Irwin, I was actually kind of happy. Cause you know, I'm from Waldorf, I'm from Maryland, East Coast. So, and uh, California was on my wish list. So I'm already thinking like, damn, palm trees, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Water and all that other good stuff. So it was more so like, I'm thinking that I'm about to be living it up with the palm trees and stuff. But in reality, Lord Jesus, coyotes. Donkeys. Donkeys, <laughs> goddamn cactuses, Man. desert, all that, so. I mean, I, feel, I was feeling pretty good until I got here, so. All right, what about you, Aina? I felt pretty happy. I was like, damn, I get to go to somewhere that's just like home, but not really home. You know, something different, <laughs> something new. I'm going to see some new shit. The <laughs> newest thing I saw was the desert. Yeah. <laughs> desert. When I was told I was coming here, the first thing I really heard, I didn't hear Irwin at all. I heard California. Me being from Chicago, I thought, okay, California, what do you think? You think water, you think trees, you think having fun, you think California, fun in the sun. So I was extremely misled, and I'm going to just leave it at that. <laughs> so, all right, question number three. <clears throat> Did your drill sergeant tell you anything about Fort Irwin before you came here? Hell yeah, boy, them motherfuckers. Are we allowed to curse? No, you're not. No, my bad. <laughs> no. Man, them dudes was like, them dudes was like, they was like, man you going to hate it because a lot of them was never stationed here, but a lot of them came to rotation, rotation here. That's so everyone hates rotation because you literally spend like 30 days in the desert, hard work and all that other crazy stuff. But it's a, it's, a, it's, it's different when you actually live here. So, mm -hmm. um, I never really, a drill sergeant never really told me that they lived here, but they always, the advice that they told me like, all right, it's, it, it's what you make it for real, for real. Yeah. And then, when you're actually stationed at the duty station, it isn't really that bad, so. All right, what about you, Aina? Did your NCOs tell you anything about Fort Irwin before you came here? My drill sergeant never did, but my pad instructor did. She said literally everything opposite of what happened here. She said, it's never gonna get cold, so you don't need your cold weather boots. <laughs> he said, he said, no. the defect food is fantastic compared to everywhere else, so you're good there. You, just, you can eat a defect and that should be good. Long story short, I was lied to. I wasn't told. <clears throat> well, what I was told is that I would be really good at my job. That was Sergeant Drill, Sergeant First Class Daniels, my drill sergeant. All he said was, well, you will be really good at your job, and it's what you make out of it. And that's the only information I got about this place before I came here. And YouTube did not help me at all. Afterwards, we went in the, the computer lab. I got a lot of information from spouses which was useless to me because I didn't know what it was like to be a soldier here. 
go on rotation, be in the box, and what exactly my job would be as an 88 mic here. So I had little to no information. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Question number four. This time we're going to start with you, Ana. What was coming to Fort Irwin like? The PCS process from AIT to actually getting here to reception. So for me, it was different because I went home before I came here. Mm -hmm. Lucky. So right. yeah, I had okay. H rep. So I spent two weeks at home getting paid BH, BAS. Absolutely do that. If you're check. leaving AIT, do that. Go home first. Yes. I get eight traps. If they tell you ain't get it, they lying to you. My my <laughs> our recruiters finagle with some stuff. They called up all the way up to the top and they got me to go back home. Yeah. Flew into LA though, after H Rap, mm -hmm. had to pay for it. It was a lot of expenses. Taxi cabs, Greyhounds. To get to Fort Irwin, I had to catch a Greyhound from LA to Barstow, then a hundred dollar cab from <laughs> Barstow to the front gate. That's to the front gate. That's good, like five miles up that way. That's good. All right. It is. I had to ruck back down in here you to the company. Through. Yeah, I rucked with all my things. So why you walk with his bag? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know nobody. My sponsor didn't even call me. They just left me here. So, yeah. But I was checking in with your sponsors. It helps. So you don't it's ruck from the gate. It's a walk yeah. All right. Uh, so for me, coming my PCS process, um, I came straight here from AIT, put me on a plane, uh, landed in LAX, not LAX, but Ontario, um, and it was dark. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of was lost, but it was like adventurous, trying to figure out who I need to get in contact with and stuff. Um, so eventually, whoever, my sponsor picked me up, and this time it's around like, I don't know, like 10 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. 10 o'clock at night or whatever, and we just driving, and yeah, it took us like three hours just to get to the base. And the dude in the van was flying, bro. I ain't never... And it was dark. You couldn't see. So all you see is darkness in the road. And he's yeah, like, you see like dark and mountains and nothing. shit. Like, yeah, you see like <clears throat> dark mountains and stuff. But yeah, got here. Um, they put me in my room. And then I was in pro I was uh, in reception for about like two weeks. Because mm -hmm. cause at my two weeks, it fell on a four-day. A four-day and a three-day. Perfect. So, and they wasn't even tracking me, so. Were they doing PT and reception when you got here? No. Okay, good. They said they just it. stopped it. Yep. Because people was getting hurt. They were like, you're not going to pass here. We're not going to send you to the unit. You're going to fail there. It's not their job. Well, whatever. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> for me, leaving AIT coming here, the plane process was easy. I had been on a few planes in my life prior to this, so I usually find airports a little confusing, just all the numbers and airports are different. So I'm from Chicago O'Hare, that's a pretty big airport, so I'm used to being a very large one. Whenever I'm in a really tiny one, that's always the best process for me. But it's always an issue finding the right terminal and making sure I'm going to the right area. So it was really asking a lot of questions. Um, <clears throat> that part was easy. You had the orders, you had your, your tickets, you were going there with a few friends. When I flew here, I flew with one friend to maybe, what was that? Maybe it was Denver, I don't know, it was somewhere in the middle, right? We, we met in the middle. And then that was just a connecting flight. So from there to Ontario, I was alone. And that's when it got weird. Just not, not really weird because I had been on a plane before by myself even. It was just now you're heading to like your career. You feel me? Like yeah. you just start a whole new job. <laughs> so to do that, I'm showing up by myself. You know, I had, I probably had a sponsor, but we didn't access a computer in AIT. So I wasn't in contact with them at all. All I had was like this, a piece of paper saying, hey, you show up here. So that was a strange experience for me when I got here it was late <clears throat> no one's waiting for you there there so there there's no van saying oh so you're haze that 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 didn't occur to me and I was stuck every number on that stupid piece of paper for my orders to come here did not connect me with anybody I needed to speak to it wasn't reception it wasn't battalion it wasn't the company it wasn't anyone's actual number so this whole thing was useless to me so I went to sleep inside the airport bathroom in Ontario in <laughs> uniform. I put my bags against the wall. I put my feet against the door. <laughs> I went to sleep. And I woke up the next day. I went to, what's, not, not U.S. USO. Yeah. USO. Yeah, I went there and they, and they tried to tell me that they're supposed to 
contact me and send a van out there, but now they don't do that anymore. So I had to like get a ride to, to Barstow the same way you did. So I called an Uber and I got a ride to Barstow. How much was that? That was I think it was like ninety eight dollars or something. So much I paid for the Greyhound. You yeah I didn't. I and thought about the Greyhound, that. but I didn't feel like doing all that. So they yeah. said they might be able to reimburse it. They might not. So I think I think out of the ninety, I think I got reimbursed about sixty, and that's it though. Yeah, so I after I got to Barstow, then I, I don't really remember. I think I got a number from the USO folks that actually answered, and that's how I found out that I had to get to Barstow first. So once I did that, they finally came and got me from from Barso Greyhound Station, and it was morning by then. So once I drove here, I saw the whole nothingness. I saw all the dirt and desert and windy roads coming all the way here. Boy, so you think I'm about to what? I would have stayed at the airport for days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody Where's the soldier? Somebody gonna pick me up? No, they wasn't, bro. <laughs> they was a free ninety nine. Free ninety nine. Yeah, that cost me. All right, next question. <laughs> uh. Okay, question number five. This one we're gonna bounce off of you. So, has Fort Irwin gotten any better or worse since you've been here, and why or why not? Uh, I would say it definitely got better because I got more acquainted with things. Uh, I, I I was able to figure out how the NCOs work around here. So, so me me knowing that pretty much like was telling I was pretty much telling myself like now I know how to move. Mm-hmm. Not, but um, yeah, it, it definitely uh, hold on, what is what is it saying? Oh yeah, that de- definitely it definitely got better. It definitely got better. I can definitely say that. Learning my NCOs, learning the tricks and the ropes around here. So yeah, it definitely got better. What about you? Ain't a better word. I'm talking about Fort Irwin as a whole, like in our unit. I say that shit, that shit got a little little bad. <laughs> that shit got bad. That shit. It was cool at first, you know, stuff made sense, we're doing shit that made sense. Mm-hmm. And then, then little first arm came through. That shit got a little weird. <laughs> then my, my new platoon arm came through. Uh-huh. That shit got, got even more weird. Uh, you know, nah, that shit, it definitely got worse. Yeah. Well, that's it for you. So, for me, it's gotten better. So, when I first got here, this was my mistake. So when I first signed the military, right? When I first signed my first contract, which right now is the law, I signed for ten thousand dollars. Right now, that ten thousand dollars has been wasted. I spent <clears throat> six, seven, I spent eight thousand dollars on vehicles. I've only had two. I bought one for six. I bought one for two thousand. Now those are gone just because I, the first vehicle I didn't like, and the second vehicle I did like, but I would have rather had the money than have that vehicle because, in my opinion, you, you you don't really need a vehicle being on this post. So, uh, let's see, where was I going with that? It's gotten better in the sense that by wasting that money, it's really taught me how to take in that personal responsibility and what it is that I spend my time on. And I went from going to work, going on a mission, and coming back and being in my room, being on the game all day, and wasting money all day, into being more constructive, which is how things like this video gotten started, and save more money's gotten started. So for me, I feel like it's gotten better for that specific reason that it, I guess, it's made me a better person, in my yeah. opinion, so. Hell yeah. All right, next question. <clears throat> what is your best and worst memory, start with you, Ana, your best and worst memory of your time here at Fort Irwin? All right, I'm going to start off with the worst, because this one, constant. <laughs> Constant in my head. It's happening, it's happening every day. Here, here we go, here we go. You ready? It's that time I cleaned 150 outdoor Aruba toilets. <laughs> that, that, shit, good. That, shit, that shit was bad. Insult to injury. After I spent all day cleaning them toilets, they, they weren't pretty. We had to clean up all the cigarette buds around them. You know, I have to take a big doogie. You know, you feel like you got smoke. You know, you feel like you just got done doing something great. I did in the same right. spot. But you're picking up butt buds. Yeah. yeah. A lot of butt buds. Best memory, I say when I got pin specialist. Okay. Because that's when I was like, hell yeah. You have a little rank on this chest. Yeah, it's about to get easy. It's about to get easy. I ain't Ooh, playing no, no game no, with no, no privates. Uh-huh. All right. So my, my worst memory my worst memory. What was my worst memory? 
me getting in trouble for something that that I got applaud for. That was probably my worst memory. Uh, basically, what I did, uh, I created a, a YouTube video, and I basically showed uh, <laughs> everyday life of what goes on as an 88 Mike here at Fort Irwin, California. Mm -hmm. But uh, I had gotten trouble for it, but the brigade sergeant major called me into his office, mm -hmm. let me know that he loved the video and he wanted me to shoot a video for the whole brigade. So I'm just like. Why do, why do I get in trouble? That's good, right? That's good. <laughs> brigade, brigade colonel, that's big dog, big bird. He said, yo, I like this. But and um, Jesse O was like, she was like, nah. Drink it, girl. She was like, nah. She was mad as hell. You get a counsel no matter what. But uh, one of my best memories here is just hearing all the hearing all the uh, the stories from battle buddies and stuff like that of of them just getting fucked up like. My bad yeah. for cursing. But getting messed up. Help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, for like getting messed up for like doing stupid stuff like like yeah, the reason why they was late to PT this morning is because they drove to freaking Arizona to go see a girl and they try to drive back to make it back on time. But six on their way away. back, yeah, on their way back they ran out of gas because they didn't to get gas. Like so yeah, I would say the best thing is like stories. hearing everybody's stories. Shit, it's fine. That actually goes into my best. So <clears throat> when we do go to the field, it's kind of like like the best time on duty, on staff duty, is hearing the divorce stories of the sergeant, right? <laughs> so being in the field, you're hearing everybody's stories about why this is better, why it's worse, and what they've been through, and just that bonding. Like, sure, you can kind of bond at work and have those conversations, but we were sitting there all day embracing the suck together. Those are always my best memories. I think that's kind of the thing that holds us together within the military is the crappy things we go through because there are plenty of good and bad days. But I, I hang on to more of the good ones. So even the bad ones sort of become good in the end, right? Yeah. So those are my best memories. <clears throat> my worst memory. Oh, my worst memory. There was a time when something happened. I don't even know what happened. I think one of the units came here and they lost so much stuff. They lost so much stuff that the colonel was flying around in a box and finding their equipment for them. Like everybody was in trouble. And that trickled down the line so that our unit, we worked for like an entire month straight. Are you talking about like they left like their tanks and shit out there? Yes, left. Oh, yeah, I Abandoned. I didn't remember get that. no grid. J j just left it and expected us to drive out there and find it. Yeah. So oh. when I tell you, you work every day, like. So working 30 days straight to me honestly isn't too much of a problem. If you say you're gonna work every day but be home by three o'clock or five, that's fine. But when you're getting off of work at 10, 11 o'clock at night, 22, 23, 24, every single then they night. tell you to be back at work at 4.45 in the morning. We're going on mission again. <laughs> I'm like, now nah, that for a month straight, that's when I felt in TC. That's when I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing this one because that. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, that's my best and my worst memory. <clears throat> yes. Uh, all right, seventh question. Do you feel like, Aina, do you feel like Fort Irwin is a good first duty station? I'm going to say yes because it's like, it's like trial by fire. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> if you're really about this stuff, if you're really about this Army stuff, yeah. you're about to find out. Go on. That's yeah. what it is. All right, what about you? All right, it's full early on the first. You said a good first duty first station. First duty station. I would say I would say yeah, um, and I would only say yeah as an eighty-eight Mike because you definitely will learn your job here. If you was infantry or what yeah. the boys out there, in them? <laughs> yeah, you would definitely you would definitely learn your job out here. Um, that's pretty much it, and it, it gives you it kind of gives you that uh that uh deployment feel mm -hmm. like. Afghanistan of you being in the desert and you not seeing you look out and the only thing that you can see is like mountains so it's kind of like they like getting you used to being away type stuff I was about to curse but mm -hmm. yeah but nah I, I think it's a good first duty station you'll learn your job very quickly and very fast yeah. <laughs> I like it <clears throat> I feel like it's gonna push you as a person and if you don't wanna stay in oh, matter of fact I'm gonna just leave it at I enjoy it for me so I would recommend it as a good first. Hey, all I want to say is I'm about to PCS. We about to PCS, yeah. and I'm about to be sad when yeah. I leave. <laughs> True. So that's like 
a factor in the end, but I'm assuming that's going to be true if you were leaving Polk or Riley or any other place that they say is really, really bad. But man, you got through it now, so if you stay in, you stay in. If you're getting out, congratulations for that, too. Have fun with that. All right, uh, next, next, the next question. Do you plan to re-enlist? Yes or no? Hell yeah. Now, thanks to InfoSec, you can say you're going to re-enlist. I think you can say where you're going. Just don't say when. Oh, or okay. when you mean. Okay. Well, yes. Yeah. Yes. That, you said you don't say where we going? Yeah, no. That's it. Okay, anyway. Well, yes, I am re-enlisting. Um, kind of already did, but... <laughs> but he yeah. got his bonus in his account right now. So I, I kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> this, this a new shirt. New, new I jeans. bought this before this video. <laughs> but no, nah, yeah, definitely re-enlisted, man. This, this like... It's B, the it's BS. It's a lot of BS that we deal with, but at the same time, it's fun. Like yeah. I work, I, I already lived my life like back home and stuff. I joined in when I was twenty four, and as soon as I got here, I'm like, that's all we gotta do. Yeah. And you gonna give me this and that and that, and I can finesse y'all. Yeah. <laughs> like, you mean to tell me I can yeah. curse y'all out and I won't get fired? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what? First of all, I can't fire me. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I really like hey, this. Fun to realize. I low key might, cause I really like this whole uh, army shit. You know, I like I like to shoot a fifty every now and then, two four nine. Yeah, I might. All right, we got two more questions. Uh, this one is, what would you rate for Irwin on a scale of one to ten? Zero being the worst experience. Don't come here. Don't volunteer for it. Don't ask for it. And ten being like it's it's the place that that you want to end your career, retire at. It's perfect. <laughs> Uh, I would I would say I would give it a um. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would I would for, for me for me I would give it I would give it a. Uh, <laughs> I give it I give it a seven point five eight seven point five eight. Now would it stay that same rate if they said you had to do another <laughs> another three years here? <laughs> Another three years here? Another uh, three. We're going to stay at seven. All right, I'm going to have to say seven. Shit, <laughs> drop to a five. You told me I had to do another three. Nah, it, bro, it's not that bad out here, bro. And plus, I already know, I know everybody. I know I know where everything is at. Like, all, yes, I want something different. They're going to all leave. It's going to be just him. Well, yeah, yeah. Everybody going to leave. You're going to get another first. Oh, I'm going to say seven more first time. But look, yeah. freaking, you got L.A. there. Yeah. So we can go there on a four day. You can go all all over uh, Southern California and Northern California. You got Vegas. Well, right well, there. Southern California. The, the only good there. part about the location itself is if you're someone that likes to travel, not only are you in a place that's a tourist attraction, but you also have LAS and LAX. Which, if you know anything about airports and big ones, if you live in a, a small place like, or you're from a small place like Guam or Hawaii, I have friends that it costs them by themselves three thousand dollars to fly home so having an airport that's so big where they offer you so many places to go like i can go to vegas and fly to germany i can go to vegas and fly to alaska i can like there's some places where there's only i don't know about one airline but there's not a lot of airlines that do fly there it's gonna cost you so much more so the fact that you can pick between la and vegas and they're both literally about what two hours and Two hours and thirty, like two hours and thirty, like they're both the same, Going the same amount. So there has, <clears throat> so there's been times, there, there's actually been times where I would look up a flight from LA and from Vegas, yeah. and Vegas is a hundred dollar cheap. Yeah. So that that saves you if you want to travel. So for me, taking that into accountability plus the experience plus all these other things, I a seven, you get seven out of ten. <laughs> what do you think? It's gonna be low as shit. I'm gonna, give, <laughs> I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a solid, solid two point five. No, why two point five? Why? He hate them Ruba toilets. Why? <laughs> why? Why? Cause one, I hate them goddamn Ruba toilets. If, if we got hazardous pay, it might go up a whole point. Yeah, I like, get, I get, I get. Hazardous pay. If, if we, if we got paid for every mission we went on. Ooh. Oh, if we got paid nah, for it, nah, that, that nah. shit would get an eleven point five. If you guys knew that, you wouldn't be going. You wouldn't be going going on that. Like, no, we don't need yeah. your unit. We have our own heads. We're not doing that. It's so, just nah. 2.5 because there's a lot of shit that we could avoid doing. A lot of stupid hey, shit. Hey, we could hey, avoid. Don't curse. Don't curse. Oh, my bad. My bad. <laughs> a lot of not so smart things yeah, that we shouldn't be doing. 
But instead, they're like, nah, nah, you got these big trucks. You know, it's not like you guys are doing anything this weekend. Here, just, just take the trucks and go out there. <laughs> come here, just come. All right. Last question. This time I'm going to start from you, move our way this All way. Right. So, <clears throat> question number 10. Is there any advice you would like to give incoming soldiers, whether that's from AIT or their PCS from another duty station? So, oh, me? Yeah. Oh, oh, so definitely, if you can't get a hold of your sponsor on your way here, definitely get a hold of somebody that you can trust. Because if not, it's going to make this process, like beginning process, a hell of a lot harder. Especially getting here, like getting on post and shit. And stuff, and stuff. I caught myself. He <laughs> did. <laughs> caught myself. Uh, an advice that I would give, like a new surgeon, soldier mm-hmm. coming from AIT, mm-hmm. uh, you might get lost. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm not saying you might get lost, but you, your, your paperwork might get lost in the, in the army system. Big make copies of everything. Yeah, yeah. Just... definitely make copies of everything. Um, let me tell you the story. Um. I was I was I was uh, traveling to Colombia for uh, winter 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 block leave, and uh, it's, for those who know, if you travel overseas, you gotta fill out a whole bunch of paperwork. A lot. Like, you gotta get a whole bunch of certs and some more stuff, right? So I filled out everything, filled out everything, had everything done. Good thing I made copies. Mm-hmm. Uh, got back from the field, and then it was like everything. Marvin, we lost your packet. And I'm looking at him like, really? Really? He's like, yeah, man. Yeah. I'm like, that's good. You want to know why? Because I made copies. Come on, let's go. <laughs> so I'm leading yeah. I'm leading an E6 to, to go show him that I made copies. And then, like, because I, I knew they didn't want me to go. Because mm-hmm. I was going to Columbia. And they was mm-hmm. like, oh, Pablo Escobar. And he was, what, uh, PFC at the time or something? Yeah, I was PFC at the time. So. I made copies or whatever. I went to the BC. The BC, he expedited the whole process and stuff. And, yeah, so my advice to new soldiers is make copies of everything. Uh, my advice, if you come here, because I don't know if you guys pay attention, you guys literally just both gave general advice for really? any soldier at any portion of their military career. I said Damn. advice <laughs> for coming to Fort Irwin. So, listen, if you're coming here, Join every Facebook group just because it is a part of the community. So this being my first duty station, I don't know how big there are with actual groups that anyone can take part in. So if you're like buying things, selling things, there's plenty of times where there's just a curb alert or someone selling something you really want. Uh, before you buy something, it's so easy to get online and ask, hey, does anyone have a plate carrier? Does anyone have this size boot? Does anyone have? And there are several times when they do have it. Uh, actually, I, I did that. I wanted to get a bike, and I asked, is anyone selling a bike? And I got a bike for free. And then later, I ended up buying another bike that was online for like $70, and I got it for, I think, like 40 So before you think to go to Walmart or wherever it is you go and buy bikes at Amazon or something, it's so, it's so easy to get online and take part of that Facebook community here that I feel like is really, really strong. It makes this place feel a little bit tighter. Um, let me see. Any other advice? Mm. Oh, one more advice, and this is for the actual experience of anyone who is a soldier here. That is to do something productive and constructive with your time. Don't waste your time every day by going home and getting on the game or hanging outside every day, smoke pit or whatever it is you do. Like, go home, pay attention to something. Go to school, work out, make some friends. Like, don't go home and sit in your room every single day. Learn about Forex. Yeah, invest your money. Don't spend all your money. Like right now, what is that? E4, I live on like, what is it, one? I think, I don't know. So it's like, let me see, 160. All I know is like every, every paycheck is 100, and it was 100, no, it was 200, then it was 180, and now it's $170 per paycheck. So you could pay me $900 every two weeks, and I'm living off of less than 200 of that. So if you come in as a fuzzy, Making five hundred, about five thirty. You you can live off of basically nothing. You don't own a vehicle. Hang out with the right people. Spend time investing in yourself. You can buy some books. Figure that crap out. Don't come here and waste your time because it's so far from everything else. You're gonna kind of sit in your room a bit. You're gonna stop. You're gonna stop going out as far as you as you used to. 
and when you start paying attention to that, that's when it's time to start doing something with your time other than sitting on Instagram all day. So that's my advice for somebody. Because let's say you want to go to Victorville, you won't get tired of driving to Victorville. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or or bar just bar still. It's thirty six miles just to get to a town that you're not gonna ever want to really be in. So I'm tired of driving. Yes. And we already eighty eight mics, so we be, be driving all the time. So and if you have a truck, don't sell it because you think everything's far. You're not gonna travel that far in that truck, I promise you. So you better use your commuter car or your wife's car or your friend's car. Just keep your truck. There's no need to sell your truck. I promise you that yeah, one. Get a beer. Yeah. Or get a bicycle. Too. Get a bike. Bike in class is free. Two days being off work. Learn how to ride a bike. <laughs> buy, buy a bike and keep your truck. So that's it. No one, you guys ain't got nothing else to say for advice or anyone coming here? No, nah, not really, man. Just, just make the best of. Just make the best of every duty station. That's it, mm-hmm. and that's what it really comes down to. Make the best of every everything you do, really. So that's all I got. All right. With that said, that concludes today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah. <laughs>